Good morning. Sorry for my slow start. I, um, I just never remember kind of the order when we're up here, even though we've gone through it. So um, forgive me for that. I'm really glad to be here with you this morning. And just a note that um, Remington and his family are actually on vacation this weekend. Um, this boy, who works 80 hours a week, uh, he's officiating at his, he officiated at his brother's wedding yesterday. Isn't that cool? And he and Casey got a and b They hired a babysitter who uh, drove down in her own car. So they actually got some time alone. So um, when we say our prayers of Thanksgiving today, we'll say our Thanksgiving that Casey and Rem got some time away with their family and with each other. So... As I think you know, we are uh, spending a couple of weeks this Easter season reflecting on the importance of fellowship in our lives as Christians. And we are aware that there are many kinds of fellowships in the world today, both in the church and in the world. The question is, what kind of fellowship are we looking for? And what are the requirements of entrance into that fellowship? In my mind, there are two kinds of fellowships. Those that center on gathering folks who are like-minded and those that center on gathering folks who are like-hearted. Like-minded folks gather around similar opinions and similar thought patterns. You are in if you think like others in the group if you believe the same things, if you hold the same principles. Being a member of a political party is one example of a like-minded fellowship. Being a member of a church that requires a particular interpretation of scripture and a commitment to a particular doctrine is another. Being a member of a recovery group that holds to the same pattern of recovery is another. My guess is that all of us are part of like-minded fellowships of one kind or another. And like-minded fellowships can provide stimulating and exciting places for us to belong. The only problem, from our Christian point of view, is when like-minded fellowships begin to disrespect anyone beyond the fellowship who holds a different opinion or a different point of view. Those that think differently can be objectified, or belittled, or even attacked. One needs only to think of the vitriol and anger that runs through any social media platform to understand what I'm getting at. Like-minded fellowships are wonderful as long as those who are members still respect the dignity of human beings that don't think like they do. You see what I'm getting at? Like-hearted fellowships, on the other hand, form around similar values. In the case of Christ Church, we gather around the shared values of the gospel, the values we see exemplified in Jesus, values like kindness, compassion, mercy, love, forgiveness, we don't insist on only one interpretation of scripture. We don't insist that there's only one view on any topic in the church or the world, but we do insist on holding ourselves to the standard of behavior that Jesus set for us, particularly in the way we treat other people. We are to do what he did, act like he did, serve like he did, love like he did. The most aggravated Jesus ever got in his own time was with the Pharisees and scribes, a fellowship of Jews who focused on being like-minded in their interpretation of the scriptures and the law. Jesus was way more interested in people being like-hearted than like-minded. It must have driven the Pharisees and the scribes crazy to see Jesus reaching out to people like the woman caught in adultery, the leper, the Samaritan, the tax collector. Jesus treated everyone with love and compassion. 
Everyone belonged to his fellowship, his tribe, his sheepfold. He was everyone's good shepherd. I could be wrong, but it seems to me that as we look out at the world in which we live today, there are many more fellowships of those who are like-minded and fewer and fewer fellowships of those who are like-hearted. And the fellowships of like-minded folks have less and less patience with those who don't think as they do. If you peruse Twitter and Facebook feeds, you know exactly what I mean. The meanness, spite, ridicule, and hatred out there is horrible. I think that's why the like-hearted fellowship we enjoy here at Christ Church is so life-giving to us. There are many other like-hearted fellowships within Christianity. Bishop Curry, who is the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, defines like-hearted fellowship in this way. He says, if it's not about love, it's not about God. This past week, a young woman from Tennessee named Rachel Held Evans died. It was a truly tragic death, death as this young wife, mother, writer, and Christian died from complications from the flu. Rachel grew up in a like-minded Christian fellowship where a literal, literal interpretation of scripture and belief in particular doctrines were a requirement for membership. Rachel began to question that as she grew older, and her writing began, and in her writing, she began to open herself to seeing Jesus, his love, and his values in a whole new way. Our mom's group, another fellowship of like-hearted women, here at Christ Church, has also read and studied some of Rachel Held Evans' work. And at a Mother's Day brunch this past Friday, the leader of the mom's group shared this quote from Rachel's writing. It spells out in detail what a saving grace a like-hearted fellowship like Christ Church can be for everyone. So here is what she wrote. We come as we are. No hiding, no acting, no fear. We come with our materialism, our pride, our petty grievances against our neighbors, our hypocritical disdain for those judgmental people in the church next door. We come with our fear of death, our desperation with status and image. We come with our addictions to substances, to work, to affirmation, to food. We come with our differences, be they political, theological, racial, or socioeconomic. We come in search of sanctuary, a safe place to shed the masks and exhale. Wired into our DNA, in the DNA of every human being, is a longing to belong. We all need a place and a space where we don't have to wonder if we are loved, cherished, and safe. Places where we can be who we truly are, without a pretense or a kind of a false face. Places where we know we will be forgiven when we fall short, supported when we need help, and valued for who we are. I pray that in this like-hearted fellowship that is Christ Church, you are finding that place. If it's not about love, it's not about God. Maybe as we go through this next week, we might pay special attention to the way we treat others in thought, word, and deed, in person and through our online presence on email and in social media. This week, will we be kind? Will we be compassionate? Will we be merciful? Will we be forgiving? Will we respect the dignity of every human being? Will we seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbor as ourselves? If it's not about love, it's not about God. That is the fellowship in which you and I have found meaning and belonging here at Christ Church. 
May we share that love with the world this week. Amen.